Welcome to another edition of the Sim Racing Garage. I'm Barry Rowland. In this episode, we'll be reviewing the Sim Pedal Sprint from Hoosingvelt Engineering. I was lucky enough to have a fellow Sim Racer loan me his set for this review. The Sprint pedals have replaced the old Pro pedals that HE used to sell. The Pros were a very good set of Sim Racing pedals. So it's time to put the Sprint pedals through the SRG's review process and see how they do. So, let's get to it. So now let's take a closer look at these Sprint pedals from Hoosingveld. First, before we get to the pedals, I thought I would go ahead and show you what you get when you order a set of pedals. Now, we also have the pedal plate here, which is the heel plate and the mounting plate for the pedals themselves. But we'll get to those later on when we get to that part of the review. Right, first off, the, the usual things that you get with the Hoosingveld pedals. Man, this is a loud rattling bag here. It's very stiff plastic. Anyway, you get a USB cable here. And yeah, nothing special here. It's a 1.8 meter. And it is a high quality cable. We know that because it says so. <laughs> yeah, let's see, we get, now actually this is, this is a bag of nuts and bolts, but those actually go over here with our pedal plate, and or rather a heel plate and the mounting plate. We get some tools, and you get four Allen wrenches. Actually, I think there's an extra one here because it's about the same size. Unless you're going, we need two of them, and that might be what they're what that's for. But you get four smaller ones. These are two fives. You get a three mil, and you get a four mil. Right. You also get these custom little wrenches here, and of course these will be used for loosening and tightening the nuts on the hardware over here when we're making adjustments to our pedals. And these have kind of a, a round shape to them in the ends, but this is a little different here. This one's got this really acute angles. Let's see if I can get you behind it. There we go, the black background shows a little better. Yeah, really a, a acute angles on cut into this one. Not sure why, but hey, very nice pieces actually when you feel it. It looks like they've been laser or water jet cut for their custom sizes that they're going to need to work on your pedals with. All right, very cool. We also get a selection of bumpers for the brakes and little spacers too. Some of these are rubber bumpers, some of them are spacers. But we'll, again, we'll get to those when we're actually adjusting the brake. And when we're adjusting the brake angle, we'll be using the brake angle adjustment tool, which is, well, a rivet. <laughs> And that's just a placeholder, really, to hold, uh, I believe it's the sleeve in this, in the brake, so it doesn't come out when we're making those changes. But again, once we get to the actual adjustments, all that will come to light, I'm sure. Right, so let's take a closer look at the throttle first. First off, I like what they've done here with this, the different colors that are using here, the contrast we're getting now off the stainless steel plates and the lever itself, which used to be, remember, it used to be all this stuff was, was stainless steel. It was all the same color, but now they've changed how they're doing it a bit. And we're still stainless steel. You know, a trusty magnet here. And you can see it sticks to that. So it, but it doesn't stick real hard. In fact, you know, you can see it slide around a little right there. Actually, it was sticking because of the uh, metal behind it. But if we get to the very front of this where it's just stainless steel right here, then yeah, you can see that it it barely sticks. I can feel a little bit of attraction there, which tells me this is a stainless plate versus the metal that you're using here. <laughs> you can see that secures itself very, very tightly. So we know this is steel, you know, it's not the stainless steel that this is. And the same thing with this side plate. If I try to connect it there, it actually sticks a little, little, you can just barely sticks on there. If I hold it upside down. It might stay, there it goes. But you can see it's kind of loose. So we know that's stainless on both of these sides for these plates, but everything else you can see is metal. And they've powder coated the things differently. This is a bead blast that they use on the stainless parts and this is some kind of a powder coating that they use on all the metal parts. Right, so we have a lot of adjustability here as far as the angle. You can see there's actually two, four, six, eight different holes. So obviously we're going to be rotating this and we'll go over the adjustments later on. The whole thing will pivot on this front bolt here and everything pivots forward and depending on the hole you select will be the angle of the pedal. 
Right. And again, that's good that you can do that because obviously we want to be able to adjust this to everybody's different needs and everybody does have different needs. That's for sure. When it comes to this kind of thing, right on the bottom here, we can see we have the load cell. There we go. And there's no markings, identifying markings on this load cell like there were on the load cells on the other, when I had the pros in here and the ultimates. So yeah, no identifying marks here. And really on the throttle, it's not going to be a very powerful load cell anyway, because it obviously you don't need it. It's different than what we need on the brake, of course. So yeah, again, the, the, this side of the, the load cell is actually attached to a spring. Uh, see it in there. There it is down inside of here. So when we're pressing on the pedal, obviously that will compress the spring. As you can see it compressing, I don't know how well it's going to show up. But anyway, yeah. So that puts the pressure on the load cell and voila, we have signals going to over to our board where the we have the load cell amplifier circuits. Yeah, it's pretty much similar build to what the other ones, the other pros were, but we're just using different materials. Of course, there could be different springs. You know, it's easy to look at this and say, oh, it's just about the same, but I'm sure there's a lot of R&D that went in for them to finally get this to where they wanted it to be. Now, we can also adjust the tension on the spring here by using preload. So that's another facet that we can adjust as far as how this throttle pedal is gonna feel. So we have the angle, and then we have the, the tightness or rather, the com how much compression or preload we have on that spring. And we also have a stop here, this bolt right here, or the screw on both sides. And you can see the stop underneath the load cell right there. And it's kind of a, a rubbery material. I'm not sure what that is made of, but it's obviously, so when we push on the brake, or rather on the accelerator, don't have the brake yet, it actually hits that stop. And it has these this part that's machined into this lever here, right here, is actually what goes down and hits that stop. I don't know if I can manipulate this, it's pretty tight. But you can see that part of it go down towards it anyway to stop. Ugh, there we go, I'm actually hitting it now. All right, so that keeps everything nice and quiet. Now I don't know about the return, how quiet it is when it snaps back, but really the only way to tell is get it mounted to something hard and see what it sounds like. But typically, Husingville pedals are quiet. They don't make a lot of noise, which can be a, a godsend if you're using these pedals next to somebody or in another room that's next to somebody's room who's trying to sleep or do something else and don't want to be bothered. Right, we have a, one thing I did notice about this is we have, we have the usual structure here with the spacers, spacing out the levers and adding the structural integrity to everything. And that's how all the Husingville stuff is assembled. But in the front here, it's not a, it's kind of a modified rod end. There, maybe they get these custom made. I don't know. They might source them from somewhere. But I don't know how well this is going to show up. But right here, you see that gap right there? It's really not a gap. What it is is a wave washer. And you can see, I can actually, I don't know if you guys will see that, but I can actually compress this up against it. So what that's doing is providing a spring tension so it doesn't move much, but it still has some movement going this way as far as laterally, laterally or yeah, like this sideways. So when we're using the pedal, you don't want this binding up and that's a solution to keep it some pressure on it. So it doesn't just rattle, right? If that wasn't in there, we would still have the sideways movement, but then you might hear some rattling, you know, when you're shaking the pedal or something, if it's not a real tight tolerance of, a, of the connecting rod or bolt or whatever's going through here. It looks like they're using just a bolt here. So you can see the nut on this side and obviously the socket cap head part of it on this side with some washers supporting it. Right, so that's how they've done that to keep it from moving around when you don't want it to, but still that spring washer in there will give it some give, if you will, so it doesn't lock up. And that's one thing you don't want. There's something different that I noticed on the pedals when I first picked them up because I noticed the gap was there and I am familiar with Husingveld equipment and it never has a gap. <laughs> Everything is very tight as far as the tolerances go. So I had to investigate further and sure enough, uh, that's, that's definitely what's in there because all of them have it. And you can even see, well, I don't know how it's going to show up. Video is such a touchy thing. Down under here, there's also a gap. You can see a little bit in there. Anyway, 
So again, that gets to the wave washer that they're using in here. Matter of fact, I think I got one right over here. I'll show you what that looks like. And this is a, a large one, but this is what they look like. See that wave in them? And that's the springish. It has a spring properties in this metal. So you push it down, it'll spring back up. We use a lot in the industry for this kind of thing. So that's what it looks like, right? So anything else we want to talk about the throttle? Got the nice RJ12s, I think, on here. They're going to plug into the brake, and we'll talk about that as soon as we get to the brake. But other than that, we have these plates are adjustable. When I first looked at this, I'm thinking, how is this adjustable? Because we've got these two metal tabs here. They're actually machined into these levers right there. So that's the only place, because there's only two tabs in here, that's the only place you're going to be able to mount this. But I, actually, I looked at the instructions for once <laughs> and saw that you just loosen this up, and we'll do that in the adjustments, and you just flip the whole thing around, and then this longish part, see how it's longer on the top right now? Well, it'll be longer on the bottom once we flip it around. And what's cool here is the Husingfeld logo is interchangeable. So when we flip it around, it'll still look the same. <laughs> I don't know if they did that on purpose, knowing they were going to get these kind of adjustments on the pedal faces or not. But anyway, it's kind of cool the way that works. Right, so enough of the throttle pedal. Well, anything else I want to talk about? Well, one more thing, the main pivot here, because yeah, the clutch is going to be a lot the same, so we're going to have to go over it twice. But you can see there's a very beefy pivot point in here, and it looks like some kind of a pressed-in type bushing on the side. You can see the, the small, thin part of it on the top here, right in there. See if it reflects on the light. There it is. So right in there, and then you can see most of a lot of it hanging out on the other side. So it's usually some kind of a pressed in bushing type deal. And it's got a sleeve that it's holding around this hollow cylinder piece right there that the bolts are actually going into. Right. And the clutch will be the same way. Let's look at the clutch before we look at the brake because there's more to look at there. Clutch is, is very similar to as far as the total build as the throttle pedal is. So most of the things for adjustments will apply to this too. It even has its own preload adjustment there. Not sure how often you would need to adjust that, but yeah, we still have the eight holes that we can adjust through here. Actually, two, four, six, yeah, it's eight holes. Eight holes for adjustments for, again, the angle. And, of course, that's going to, as far as the angle goes, when you're using this clutch mechanism, you can see how it kind of, well, you, know, you can actually see it. See how it rotates up? So the... That it should feel pretty much the same, but a little bit different because of the, the approach angle of the pedal when we're actually bringing it up into the holes. But we'll check that out when we're going through the adjustments. And yeah, like I said, the build is very similar to the throttle down here. We have the same thing going on with the bushings. We had the same thing going on here with this little rod end device. And again, you can see the gap. Well, you can see it in there on the washer, that little wave washer in there. You can see again the little gap there. And yeah, built very similar to the throttle. And it, however, does not have, you can see it has got the spring. Actually, we can see the spring mechanism a lot better here. You can see that it's a very thin spring in there when we use this clutch. So it, this spring is made to load on the load cell. It has nothing to do. You'll never feel it when you're actually using the clutch. Or the spring you're feeling when you're using the clutch is this guy here. If you notice, it's kind of a, a thick spring there. See how wide the coils are on that? Very different than what we saw on the actual throttle. So yeah, kind of thin, comparatively speaking, anyway. Right. Anything else we want to look at here? Adjustments the same there. There is no stop here. Well, there, there is a stop, but it's not adjustable. The stop is actually, you see a pin right here that captures it in this plate. And on this side, we have another pin or notch, or whatever you want to call it, sticking out on this side of the plate. But it's not adjustable. So... The throw is the throw as far as is the is the clutch mechanism is com, is concerned rather, so I'm not sure how this is going to work. It does feel like a clutch because of that the way this thing goes up as you're pushing down on it, but that's just the tension making this come up because of the geometry of the way they made this thing. So I'm not sure. It feels pretty good actually with a hand, but of course you know until you get it underfoot you can't be certain. But it still feels like you're hitting the springs on the pressure plate and pushing them down as that as it lifts the clutch plate off of the flywheel and then stays there it's easy to keep it right there <laughs> but it, then as soon as you get a little pressure off of it 
it snaps back, which is the way a clutch should work. Right, on to the brake real quick. Now, what the biggest thing here that's changed, to me anyway, when I first saw it, is that this puppy, now we have an integrated circuit board that's performing load cell amplifier duties and conversion to USB. You can see the USB port here. You can't see much of it in here. It's just a, well, it's just a circuit board, so it's not a whole lot to see on the top here. I'm trying to get you a little look down inside of there. And you can see, well, you can't see much. <laughs> there is a little red plug. I think you can see that down in the center here. And that's for the load cell for the brake pedal, right? So it used to be this. I just happened to have one of these. Where did I put it? Oh, there it is. This, where we had a remote mount module, control module, that had the load cell amplifier circuits and, of course, converting it to USB. Now, this is a real old one because it had, back in the day when we first started getting these Husevelt pedals, we actually had to put the individual wires into these little blocks here, these mounting blocks, right? And it's got a, and it, was, it wasn't that hard or anything. It's, it's got, everything's got, is nice and labeled here to what, which wire needed to go where. But yeah, then, you, then we went to, from these, these lugs, where we actually put the wires in and tighten them down, to these plugs. But we still had this with the plugs. Instead of the lugs, we had the plugs. That even rhymed. And yeah, it was much easier, obviously, than having to wire it, hardware it like this, where we just plug things in. And of course, all of the pedals came with their own length of wire and their plugs, including the brake pedal, which now does not have that. Very cool. I really liked <laughs> that they did that because now it alleviates the pain of trying to figure a way to, to load, or rather to mount that load cell amplifier circuit board. And you don't have to worry about it anymore. It's right here in the brake pedal. Not only that, but when we actually are mounting these and putting them together, see how this looks, you just plug into the brake pedal and there you go now there is a concern here for how far away we can get the throttle from the brake but let's see that's uh i think that's pretty far if you are a left foot breaker and you're not going to use the clutch much it's it's common to spread these out further than if you were running like a heel and toe setup where you would have it closer like that and you spread these puppies out like this and now we've got a lot more room for our feet to go in here so we're not screwed stuff together when we're just doing left foot braking. It makes it more comfortable. It's easier on your hip joints, the sockets you know, down in your hips and your knees and everything else when you're not trying to go down to a fine point with your legs at a weird angle. The, more, the further apart you can get them spread, the more comfortable it's going to be. And it used to not be very far. This looks pretty good. In fact, I'll go ahead and just do a quick measurement here. It's, it's, over, it's about four and a half inches. So about four and a half inches or... For the rest of the world, that'd be about 115 millimeter. And I'm not putting any tension on the wire right now. It's just kind of hanging there. So, and you want to be careful with that. You don't want to put tension on the wire or the plug here, but then because you, you can have disconnects and weird things going on while you're running your pedal. So you want to make sure you got slack in it. But anyway, it's nice that you can do that. And of course the clutch is the same thing. It'll sit over here and plug in onto this side of that circuit board. And there we go. We've got some really big spacing if we want it, or if we don't, and we're going to run some heel and toe, we can get it nice and close. Very nice. I like the way this is set up. And that integrated circuit board, really, unless, and of course, you probably won't think much of it unless you have been involved by uh, in the past with mounting these and finding a place to mount it and do all that stuff you had to do, a piece of Velcro, whatever the case may be. And let's see if I can get this out of here without messing anything up. There we go. So, yeah. Now, back to the brake. Again, now we got past the circuit board part, <laughs> which uh, uh, for, it's just the geek in me coming out that I really like that they've done this. And yeah, the brake adjustment, we'll get to that when we get there, but there is a concern here when you're adjusting the brake, when you're pulling this bolt out to adjust your brake angle, just like you adjust the brake angle on the, or rather the angle of the pedal on the throttle and the clutch. But here we have this rod in here that they clearly do not want coming out. Now, it is kind of, positioned in here, but it must slide back and forth easily or something because you put this rivet in to push the bolt out, all right, but we'll see that once we get there. And that, and as it pushes it out, the rivet takes up the space so this sleeve here doesn't go anywhere, right? 
course, they've got the, the load cell wire wrapped around it too, so that's a concern for warranty and maintenance, and if somebody lost that and ripped the, ripped the wire out or damaged that wire, you'd be in big trouble. Now, the load cell in here is obviously, it looks bigger to me than what's in the other ones, and this actually has some writing on it, 8BO0194, and you can just barely see it down in there. I don't know how well you guys are going to be see it. It's right over here. Just some writing down in there. I'll hold it still so you can read if you want. Now, the actual load cell itself, compared to the one on the throttle, you can see it's definitely bigger. And 65 kilogram is the max on this, 143 pounds, which for the intended segment of, of sim racers that this is intended to, or intended to, uh, or was manufactured towards, uh, yeah, I think that's plenty. You don't need to have more than 100 and, you know, 43 pounds. It's almost 150 pounds of pressure. You gotta, it'll max out on this pedal. I think most people are gonna be very happy not putting that much pressure on. Only people trying to actually simulate an actual race car brake pedal would probably be interested in something heavier than that. And then you can always go with the ultimates at that point. Right, so yeah, this load cell, and again, this load cell does not have a spring. It doesn't need one as far as pushing on a load cell because when you push on this brake pedal, it's actually pushing on this right here, which actually in turn bends against, it causes this to bend. And that's what load cells do. They bend, they send the signal how much bend they're experiencing, and that's how much brake you're applying. Right. So yeah, not much else to look at because it's a very similar build, like I said before, as the other ones. And then again, there's our wave washer, right? And yeah, bushings are the same kind of bushing set up there as it was the throttle. So not much else to, to see here. I'm, I'm not sure why they went from the, from the stainless steel to the steel powder coated regular steel. But yeah, I imagine economy might have something to do with that. No sense of using stainless steel if you don't actually have to. Uh, I'm sure that this is this is going to do just as good a job if you had stainless steel sitting here. Now, I kind of wonder why the first ones when they came out were all stainless steel assemblies, but maybe that's just they had big sheets of it, and that's just where they were cutting it out. And yeah, that's just the way they decided to do it. All right, anything else we want to look at here? Yeah, that's about it. Oh, and the adjustments here. Yeah, we'll get to that because they're you know you, to to put the different bumpers in here you have to take things apart but we'll get to that section once we get to the adjustments which we will actually get to next not sure which one i'm going to start with but yeah the next segment will be the adjustments available on these pedals now for our brake pedal adjustments of course the adjustment we'll probably be doing most to get things dialed in will be the adjustment of the rubbers in here the bumpers and we also have an angle adjustment, and I wanted to go through the angle adjustment because it's really simple on these guys, right? We just pull this out. There's not a big concern about anything happening as far as washers and things falling out. You can just pull this out, rotate it, put it back in the hole you want, but we'll look at that when we get there. But it's a little more complicated with the brake pedal because of the me mechanicals of this brake pedal. And if you see here, this is actually, let me use the rivet here, or no, the brake adjustment tool <laughs> and there's actually two plates here now obviously we have the stainless steel plate over here but we have the two steel plates are actually hinged here and that's to do with the way this brake pedal is working when we're actually using it so in between there there are some washers right see those washers over there and once we take this out these these two plates are going to come well, we're going to want to come away from each other when we're moving the side plates, right? We're moving the actual adjustment plate. These plates are gonna be loose because we're pulling the bolt out. If you pull the bolt all the way out and didn't put this in there to hold it all together, then you could lose a washer or something could come loose on you, all right? That's the whole reason why we're using this to chase the bolt. So let's go ahead and do that, shall we? And all I'm gonna do is take the nut off here while I'm holding the four millimeter screw here. And we're going to do that pretty quickly because we like to use the power tools whenever we get a chance to, to speed things up for us. So we'll go ahead and take this off. And that's the nut and a washer over here. Don't lose this because you'll have to use them again, obviously. <laughs> now, 
there's the bolt and oh, something else I like to do here before I adjust these plates and I do it on all the pedals is loosen these two front four millimeter screws here. It just facilitates an easy rotation. If this is too tight, you got to scrunch it and you, know, you got to put a lot of pressure on it. So I usually take a couple of four mils and just loosen it up. I'm not going to really take them out or anything. Get one side loose. And the funny thing about these, and I'm glad it did this, is I'm turning this, but because this other side, the other side came loose first, it's not coming loose. So I'm going to have to tighten this side again. Whoops. Get you out of the way. So this one has to tighten up again so I can see if I can break this one loose. Right? So I get that one tight and I'll hold it. There we go. Now I got that broke loose. All right. Now this is a new set of pedals, so it hasn't been used yet. So that might be why they're a little stiff. And now, of course, we could have the same problem on the other side. So I'm going to push that in a little bit now that I broke it loose. And this one's already been broken loose, so I should be able to get them both now. And there they go. So sometimes you have to do that when you have these two screws going in the same cylinder here because that rotates, right? So now they're, they're loose now, and that's all I wanted to do. I also want to make sure that you have all your preload loose because you don't want anything binding up when you do this. Right, so now you can see everything's kind of loose here, right? So I can actually take this bolt out now, and of course, they tell you in the directions to just take this and push the bolt through, and that's what we're going to do. And there it goes, and I'm chasing it, obviously, with the rivet. And the bolt will now come all the way out the other side. Oops. Like this. I got the rivet in. And the rivet's holding this stuff together. So you don't want these plates too loose. In fact, I'm going to snug this up a little bit. They just rattle in just a little bit too much. I'm just going to give it a little snug there. There you go. Now they're not rattling so much. Now, I am going to, while putting pressure on this, pull the rivet out. Okay. Oh, now you're supposed to do that. And see what's happening? It's already happening. <laughs> These two pieces of metal want to separate. See how it's exposing the washers and stuff in there? So that's why you want to use the rivet. And the reason I did that so I could show you. And yeah, all kinds of bad things can happen when that goes wrong. So I wanted it to happen to me because I usually can get these things put back together <laughs> without too much trouble. So let's see if we can do it this time. Okay, we got the rivet back in this side, right? So that's holding... We've got the rivet back in this side. Let me pull that back out so you can see me do it again. That was a little bit too close there on the camera. But you can see how this is just moving all around now. And we've got a mess on our hands. So again, this is why it's important that you have the rivet. Let's see if I can get it back in there. And without getting the washers have to be aligned properly again. So you can see it can be a very big headache if you don't use our tool. Let's see if I can get this go back together here. There it goes. All right. So, and the other side has come loose too. You can see how it's moved. See that? So, yeah. That's one of the reason <laughs> we want to use the tool. And I did that on purpose so you guys can see why you need to use this to chase that bolt out. Now, again, what we'll do is go to the normal procedure and just raise this to where I want it to be as far as the, and I'm not sure what that really is, to get it where I want it to be as far as the rake on the pedal. I'm gonna go down, I'm gonna go about four on this, and then I'm gonna go over here with the bolt. And remember, the bolt's got a washer on it, so don't lose that washer, or don't put it back on without the washer. So now I'm kinda looking sideways here at it, where the hole should be, and see how it just popped right in. Now as it's popping in, I'm pushing out the rivet by pushing this one in, just like that. And it, you should just be able to push it right through. Ah, rivet ejection process accomplished. <laughs> so now we've got the bolt back in, but you can see here, I have, I'm on the fourth hole here, but only on the second there. No big deal. You just snake the bolt back out just a little far enough so you can adjust it again. And I'll go up to the fourth one and then push it through like so. There we go. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I want to double check. And you can see my angle is now more of a straight up angle. I'm trying to hold a level here on the bottom. So that's where I'm going to want it. So I'm thinking four for all of them. But then that might change depending on what I'm doing, heel and toe or I'm doing left foot braking. I might actually want to change it from that. Now, before I move on, because I've 
done it the wrong way and everything came loose around the, where these washers are, I'm going to have to look in here and make sure they're all sitting right. And if you can see, this one looks pretty good. All right, the washer looks like it's sitting where it should. It's flat. You might not be a seat as well. But anyway, that one looks pretty good as far as where the washer is. Now, this one over here is a different story. This one, you see how it's sticking up? Because the washer's kind of out of alignment there. See, it's kind of moved to the side. So what I'm going to have to do is loosen this up a little. I don't know if I can do this and show you at the same time, but the whole idea is to get this loose enough to where I can kind of wiggle that washer. In fact, I might even be able to push it in with something. You might want to try to see, oh, there, yeah, that moved pretty easy, actually. So I'll just kind of shake it around. There we go. Now it's flat. Okay, so now it's flat, and I can just press this down, and it'll keep it there. Right, so that took longer than it should have if I would have done the process correctly, but I did that <laughs> again. I hope you guys get the idea now that you definitely want to use this to make your life a lot easier when you're changing the rake or the angle on this pedal set. Then it's simply putting our washer back on and our nut, and we'll go ahead and tighten this up because we won't need to do anything else with it once we have it tight. So we'll go back to the four, and I already have the clutch set on this, so it's not going to tighten it down too much. And there we go. So now we've got the rake we want. At least I think that's the rake we want. And yeah, it looks like looking good there. Now let's talk about the adjustments for the bumpers themselves. Now, of course, well, the way it comes stock, it's got this big bumper in here. Now, I'm not sure the durometer of that, but we're going to check it, but it is a longer, even if it's the same durometer, say, and they give you some other ones. They give you one that's not quite that long, this one, and they give you a littler one right here. And then, of course, this will progressively stiffen up the pedal as far as the feel goes. And these could be actually the same durometer, but because they're different lengths, they're actually going to deform differently, so they're actually going to act differently when they're installed. So this is actually softer than this, even if this was the same durometer as that, because this doesn't have as much compression or area to compress as this does. Hope that makes sense. <laughs> so anyway, easy enough to change this stuff. Uh, it's, and it's very similar to the, to the old way that it was changed. And that is we're just going to pull this out by taking the preload off. Now, we've already taken the preload off to do the adjustment over here, so we don't have to worry about it anymore. See, it's nice and loose. So all we do is pull this plate. You see how that plate is sitting? It's got grooves in this plate here that fit into the corresponding notches cut into these side plates, right? And the spring pressure, and when we have the preload on it, keeps pressure on that plate so it doesn't fly out on us, right? But once all the pressure is relieved, it's pretty easy to just put your fingers behind it. I like to do it this way, but you can get back here and push if you want with your thumbs. You know, it's all relative, as long as you get it done. And you just kind of pull it towards you a little bit there, and it, it just swivels, and yeah, see how it just pivots right up. Now, the only thing you want to do is make sure you pay attention to how you're taking this stuff off. You've got this plate, which actually contains a washer bushing combination deal going on there. And this little washer plate there, you see that? That actually captures the spring to keep it from moving around. Very nice design. I like it when they go to details like that, just having a flat washer. And we've got a bushing underneath that spring. Let's go ahead and set this over here. Spring comes off. And again, that's just for that pre-movement of the pedal like you see, like you have rather on a lot of brake pedals. As you first push them, there's that little bit of movement before it, it engages against the pad actually comes and clamps onto the calipers that are in the brake system. So yeah, that's I like that. Some people, you could actually take this out. There's enough spacers in here to just get rid of this if you want to. But yeah, I, I actually like that feel. So again, personal preference. Then we have this bushing here, and of course that bushing helps keep that spring centered on the shaft. So it's not flopping all around when we're trying to change things, right? Or actually when you're using it too. So you just gotta make sure you put that back in the same order they came off. And one more rule to observe here, like all bumper type brake pedals or pedals in general, you wanna make sure there is a washer support between each one of the bumpers, right? You don't want to have the bumper on like this, right? You need a washer there because it's going to deform and squish and you just need to support that with this, 
right? So let's take that back off. And we got a couple spacers in the front remaining, but yeah, we'll just let them sit there. I'm, I'm not gonna change too much here. I kind of like the way the pedal feels, but this is just a demonstration. Now these things can get a little stuck on these, bu these bushings or the bumpers or rubbers, whatever you want to call them. And yeah, this come right off though. You just put a little pressure on it and it'll snap right off. So now we've got three different sizes. Now what we're gonna do here, as we usually do, is I want to find out what the shore rating is on this. And even though I'm doing it on this mat, it tells me the same as it does when I'm doing it on the wood. So just to clarify that in case anybody has a question, what the durometer of the mat is. <laughs> All right, so we'll go ahead and put this one here. And yeah, that one is 72. All right, so that's the big one. I don't know how well it's going to show up there, but it's 72. And we'll go down to the middle one. Put pressure on that. And that's actually, it's starting to deform a little bit and come back on me. That's 72 also. Now we go to the little one. And it's coming back. See, when you initially put pressure on it, then it'll deform and it'll come back usually to what the rating is. And there it is, about 72 and a half, 72. So that's about the same thing. So the, that's, that's what I was saying to begin with. They're all the same durometer, cut from the same rubber probably. But because they're longer than each other, they're going to compress more. They have more area to move than, say, the small one does. Right. So then you would put the stack on any way you want to. You could actually stack up. I don't know how many of you have of these. But you could actually you get three more of these plastic ones. And these things are just very stiff plastic. So durometer rating is very high on these. And they're made to take up space where you're taking out the other bumper. So I got three of these. There's the bumper that was originally in there. I got three of these. So you see, it's not quite where it needs to be. But they actually gave me, or come with, the, in this kit anyway, three of these guys, okay? And we could probably compensate with one of these or two of these and still get away with it if we wanted a totally solid brake pedal. But the whole idea is to, if you want something stiffer than this, then you can go to the medium. In fact, why don't we do that? We'll just go to the medium. But we're going to have to take up the space we're losing between the two. And that space should be about one of these spacers, I think. So there, if we put one of these spacers in, like that. Yeah, that's about the same. So we'll put a spacer in with the shorter bumper. Now remember, when we put this thing back together, oh, well, before we do that, I meant to show you, we can get a better look at that circuit board now that we have the rod out of the way, right? Before we were looking at it, we couldn't see that all the little circuit stuff in there that we love seeing. All right. So I thought I'd give you guys a glimpse in there, their custom board in there. I don't see any distinguishing marks on here as far as whose board this is, but I'm pretty sure it's just a custom one that Hoosieville had made up. Right, back to the task. Now, I'm going to put the rubber bumper on, the middle one. Yes, we're going with the middle one, right? So I'm going to put a washer in first. Remember, always got to be a washer between the bumpers, and then I'll put the bumper in. Now, because I'm going to put one of these hard plastic ones in to make up for the distance, that we're losing when we put this one in. I'll put this in, but I gotta put another washer in here. Okay, we gotta capture these bumpers in between. Then I can put this on there. Now I should be about the same way if I add one more of these washers back. I believe that's where I wanna be. The only way to find out is to rebuild our stack, which means take the spring bushing, that's what I'm calling it anyway, spacer, and then put the spring back on, and then we're gonna put the plate on, all right? Now, hopefully, this is not too long, and it will go in here without too much trouble. So we're going to find that out. So I like to kind of brace it against my body here as I'm trying to push this down to get it to go. And let's see what we can do here. Ah, oh, that's too tight. So that means I'm going to take this back off. Spring comes off. The bushing for the spring comes off. The plate comes off. And this time, I'm just going to leave the bushing in there because it's a hard plastic. It's not rubber, right? So we really don't need another washer on there. That was just for a space thing. I'm going to put that back on with the spring. And this us see what we got. Put our plate back on. And let's try it again. It should go any easier this time. There we go. And just push it down until it snaps into place. So I'm just going to push it. Bingo. And the spring pressure popped it in like that. Now, we still got to put the preload back on it, right? Depending on how much preload we want. So that's, again, just turning the knurled washer here. 
pretty simple. Just turn that washer and once we get where we want, then we'll go ahead and lock it down with this 12 millimeter bolt right there, or nut rather. All right. So there we have the adjustments. I'm not sure if I'm going to like that or not. I might go back to what it was originally. I might even go with a smaller one and use some more of these spacers. But again, this is something you have to play with to find out what you like as far as what you're trying to duplicate or replicate in the, whatever car you're in. Really simple system, though. I've always liked the way Husingveld did this. Um, it, it's pretty simple just to take things in and out. And yeah, simplicity is a good thing when you have this mounted in your, <laughs> your rig and you're crawling around underneath trying to get the thing adjusted so or make a, a different adjustment or whatever you're trying to do so yeah there we have it and yeah not much else to see here as far as the adjustments we know we got angle we got the we got the preload and then we have whichever bumper that we're actually choosing here so yeah all that matters on what we finally get in the pedal field and it's still got that initial move to it because of the spring compression yeah i think i think that just might be right because this, was, this felt a little soft even when I was doing it by my hand. Right, so there we have it. Anything else we're going to talk about? No, that's it. Um, we could talk about the pedal face adjustment real quick. And that is actually, it's pretty simple. Actually, I'll probably do that. On the, we've took enough time on this already. Let's go to the clutch next, and we'll talk about the pedal face adjustment once we get to that one. So now let's do some adjustments on this clutch pedal. And... This is going to be similar to what we do on the throttle pedal as far as rake and preload adjustment. But there's another adjustment here that will allow us to change the force that it takes to make this clutch pedal work. And it's similar to what we're going to do on the throttle, but we'll see what the differences are first. First thing we're going to have to do is I want to change the rake on this, okay, the angle. And I want to get it to where it's like my brake pedal. As you can see right now, there's a bit of a discrepancy there, right? So hopefully I can go up. This is four on the brake pedal. Hopefully I can do four on this and everything will work just fine. That's the idea. So what we're going to do is, first off, we're going to take off this bolt that lets us uh, make these adjustments. And I'm also, remember, I also like to see if I can just get a little bit of a looseness here just to make things just a little bit easier. And we have that situation again where one came loose and one didn't. Remember that on the brake pedal? And, oh, this thing keeps snagging. Let me get this brake pedal out of the way. So, there we go. Now I broke it loose. So hopefully we can get them both loose this time. There we go. Okay, so now we should have it loose enough that this moves freely. You might not have to do that. It might move anyway, but it's just something extra step that doesn't take that much time if you have the tools to just make it happen. Right, so then we're going to take off, and I've already loosened this up. Just like we did on the brake pedal, we're taking that nut and washer off, right? So it's good just to dump the washer in your hand. Don't want to lose those. And then we're going to, now because we don't have any problems like we saw on the brake pedal, and again, uh, the washer's coming out and everything moving around without using our special brake adjustment tool, this is not a problem here. We don't really need it. You can see the bolt will come straight out, just like that. And they're already moving freely. There we go. So, what I want to do here is go to the fourth one. And you can see what happened. I lost my, didn't lose it, but this fell out of the bottom. And that is a spacer, right, that goes back in here. So you want to be mindful of this kind of stuff when you're, when you're doing this. So what I'm going to do is, because the bolt goes from this side, I'm going to adjust this one first. And I'm going to put it on the fourth hole, just like we have on the rig pedal. Then I'm going to put my spacer back in, and you're going to have to get it under the wire there, in the general vicinity where it needs to be. Again, making sure this bolt that goes back in, you didn't lose your washer there. And we're going to put it in the fourth hole, and you can kind of see it, the spacer there as it lines up in the hole. It's not quite there, but I'm going to wiggle it around a little bit as I put this in to see if I can get it to line up where I want it to. It kind of fell in too far. So we're just going to wiggle this around a little bit with my thumb. <laughs> uh, maybe you do want to use this tool <laughs> to keep the spacer from moving around on you. I'm actually going to use the tool to get the spacer back where I need it to be, I think. And again, be mindful, I just dropped the washer off this bolt. So yeah, this is, you know, doing this with these things mounted to your rig is not going to be 
the most pleasant experience, I would imagine. Because it, it you know, maybe it's a pain in the butt <laughs> when you have everything mounted and you're trying to get around and get to all this stuff. All right, so now we, we're started. I got my spacer captured now with the bolt, so it's not going anywhere. And now I can actually make sure that I have the adjustment correct on this side before I run this bolt home. And there it is. Bingo. All right, so now we're set. All we got to do is take our washer and our nut, put them back on, and securely fasten them this time. Well, not this time, but I had it loose on purpose before. And yeah, here we go. And I'm just going to tighten it up real quick. I got the clutch here. Easy enough. Again, not so easy um, when it's mounted to your rig because you've got these other pedals next to it and you might not, you're not going to be able to get to one or the other side of these things very easily. So again, it's always easier to do it on the bench. And I like to mention that in case everybody, anybody forgets that. <laughs> I'm going to leave these things loose, the two on the front, as we do the next adjustment, which is this little rod end here. Okay. We're actually going to take that loose to where we can move it up and down. Right. So let's see what that looks like. I'm going to go ahead and this is a seven mil, by the way, nut. So we're going to have to change our socket here and go to our seven mil. And we have a two and a half mil cap head over here. Right. So we're going down different size, uh, uh, going to a smaller size rather. So let's go ahead and do that and see what we got here. Oops, I'm the wrong wrench. It's a three, not a four. All right, here we go. There we go. Nut free. Put this out of the way. All righty. Now, when I take this off, you're going to be able to see what adjustments are available. I'm actually not going to make the adjustment because I'm kind of thinking I'm going to want it in the middle here. But here's the deal. You can see there's actually three holes in here. There's one above where the bolt is right now, and there's one underneath. So you would take the bolt off. And again, we don't have any tension. We, we, to do that, you're going to have to detension this. You have to take the preload off. And I'm going to go ahead and do that just because, well, you would have to do it if you were going to make this adjustment. And it can be a little bit fiddly, all right, because you're trying to get into this nut right here. And it's kind of an angle. You can't really get in the top of it. I mean, sometimes you can, but you can't turn it very. You can get on the top of it, but you can't really turn it very far because of these two brackets are keeping that from happening. So you kind of got to get a little angle here and start, you know, undoing it. Now, you'll know when you've got enough tension release from this because this cage will drop down as I take the preload off of this spring. If you watch carefully here, if I can actually get it to move again. Okay, let's try it down here. There we go. As I'm loosening it, see that? See how it's dropping down? That's because I'm pulling the pressure off that spring and it just keeps dropping down, right? So it should drop down, yeah, to a point where it doesn't drop anymore. I think that's it. See how loose that is? All right, so we don't have any more pressure back there. Now that we're loose, we can actually do something with this bolt here if we want to change it. So we just pull that out, right? I would pull that bolt out. And then I would move this up or down where I wanted it. But I'm going to leave it in the middle right now because I think it, it might be where I want it when I'm doing my heel and toe. You don't want a super duper heavy pedal when you're doing heel and toe. At least I don't like one like that. And yeah, so I'm thinking I'm going to leave it right there in the middle. So if I had done a change, I would have pulled the bolt out, moved that where I needed it to be up or down, put the bolt back in, and then you're good to go. Easy enough, right? Then we put our washer back on, our nut, and tighten the valve back down. And we'll do that real quick. Done. All right. So now, though, remember, we have the preload that we're going to have to tension back up. So that's just a matter, again, of getting into here and start turning this nut. And you'll see the cage come back up as I'm doing that. So obviously, if we're tightening it back up, it's going to raise it. So I just keep turning this. And again, this is fiddly because it's not easy to get in here to this nut. And you can see this lock nut here is actually already loose, right? And you want to tighten that up once you're finished with your final adjustments. You don't want that being loose in case something will move on you. Right, so now you can see that the cage is actually moving up. 
as I'm adding preload. See it going up? So yeah, that's what you want to see. And how much preload, again, is going to be something you might want to adjust to feel, to, or rather to get the feel that you want in your clutch pedal. I'm going to stop right there. Okay, that actually feels pretty good. I don't think I'm going to leave it there on the uh, as far as the preload goes. And I'm going to tighten this back up so it locks down this, this locking nuts configuration. We have two nuts against each other that locks it up against that front part. So now we've got one more thing to do. Because remember, we did loosen these front guys to make the pedals, uh, the panels rather, slide easier. So it's just a matter of snugging those back up. Don't need to over tighten them. Just give them a good snug. Now we're good. Get all my tools out of the way here. Yeah, and that's by hand. So obviously when your leg's doing it, it's probably going to be a little easier. Now one more thing I'm going to do while we're on this pedal, and that is change the pedal face as far as the height of the pedal face. Now there's a very small, I believe it's a two mil piece right here. And I'm going to use one of their Allen wrenches that's in the kit to loosen this up. I think I'm, yeah, I'm going to have to loosen it up from the back. And fortunately, we already have the seven mil. See, we got, let me I guess better show you this before I do it. It's got a nut on the back there. All right, so we got to hold one or the other while we're spinning one. I'm going to spin the nut off the back with this while I'm holding it up front with this. Because you do have to take this off to make this adjustment, right? So let's see if we can do that. There we go. There goes our nut. And no washer. Okay, so it's just the nut. And again, all these nuts are like this. There's the safety nuts. You see that little bit of nylon or plastic in there. It keeps them from vibrating off. Set that aside, we got a screw here, and this is a flathead, obviously, so it'll sit flush and not interfere with what we're doing. We can get a focus there, there we go. Right, so now it's just a matter of taking it off. And again, we'll take a look at this plate while we're looking, while we actually have it off. Again, you can see it has that a little bit of radius to it, which is very nice. You know, having a flat pedal is okay, I think, for the throttle, but for the brake and the clutch, I think the radius really helps facilitate the action and the movement of the pedal. At least it's more comfortable for me when I'm using it. Right. So now we're just going to flip this puppy around, just like that, and put it right back into the existing notches. Again, there's our notches on the side. I guess I'll show you that before we close it back off. You know, our tabs, if you will, fitting in the notches here, and then we'll just put it back on. And again, <laughs> as I said before earlier, you can see the Husingveld logo works no matter which orientation you have it in. I thought that's pretty cool. So, easy enough to put this back on. Screw goes back in. Nut will go on the, on the back. And we get it started. And then, the magic of power tools will secure it right back on there. Oops. And that like that all right so there we have it now we have a lower pedal face which i'm probably going to change <laughs> back to where it was but i wanted to show you me changing that now let's check our angles now we're talking i don't know how well this is going to show up but yeah you can see my angles now are from what i can see right on there so this is definitely working across all at least these two pedals we'll just check the throttle in a second or in a minute and so it looks like the four hole, if you do a fourth hole on all of them, it looks like they're all lining up pretty well there. Of course, the accelerator typically is a little more lean back anyway a little bit in a, a configuration, a pedal configuration, depending, of course, on what you like. But most of the time you'll see it a little bit. But I like mine even. I like everything even out. So what we'll do is, yeah, we're done with the clutch now. And what we'll do is get to the, and again, one more thing I meant to mention this. This preload, I might play with this depending on what I feel. Once it's mounted, then I can play with the preload a little more if I think I want more or less of the action. So that's something, again, very subjective and, yeah, personal taste. Right, so we'll get to the throttle pedal next. Now let's talk about throttle adjustments. First off, the rake, or the angle, definitely needs to be changed on this throttle pedal. I want it to be even with my brake pedal. You can see it's... Any, 
He's a, lot, a ways off from that, obviously, because this is actually on the fourth hole. And we have the clutch on the fourth hole, too, but they kind of line up. But I got a feeling, because typically the way these things are made, pedal sets, they always have a little bit of gap back from of the front of the pedal, the brake pedal plate. There's always a little bit of setback from the throttle. And that's, so when you're doing heel toe, if you're pressing on the brake pedal, it goes back. It comes even with the throttle pedal so you can reach over and hit it with your heel. Or roll off and hit it with the side of your foot, however you want to do your heel and toe. And yeah, this, I like mine have, have mine level because this is going to be a very stiff pedal that I'm using. It's not going to move that far when I'm actually using it. So if you have the pedal, then, you can, then you're kind of reaching around trying to get the throttle. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to see if this comes out right. I went four holes, adjustment holes on the brake and on the clutch, and they landed up, and they actually ended up lining up very well. But this, I got a feeling, is not going to. So I'm going to take this to five to see if I can get it even. Just, just as a test here. And yeah, same thing we did on the clutch and really on the brake pedal. We're just taking this bolt out and then we're going to raise or lower these holes. So let's do that. I've actually got it loose, so we don't have to make noise taking it off. And I'm just going to unscrew that, take the nut off, just like we did on the rest of them. There's our washer, make sure we don't lose it. And then we're going to carefully pull the bolt out. And there we go. Right, now I'm just going to take the side that the bolt goes in, I'm going to move that one first, and I'm going five holes. So let's see, that is one, two, three, four, five, right there. Get it lined up, and then the bolt should slide right back in. And it does. Don't want to push it all the way in yet, because we don't want to interfere with the hole over here, because we still have to slide that plate. So we'll go ahead and do that now. And I'm looking at it to find out where the fifth hole is. One, two, three, four, five. Get it lined up. Easy to go too far, and there we go. Bingo. So now the screw is through. It's just a matter of putting our washer back on, our nut, and tightening everything back up. And again, this is a four mil socket head cap over here, and it's a 10 mil for the little nut over here. Right, so actually that's not a 10 mil. That's actually an eight mil nut. I said that wrong. Okay, so now we're just going to tighten it up. There we go. Now, let's see how it looks in relation to the brake pedal. And I'm going to make sure that the fronts are even here. So they're right next to each other and everything's lined up this way. And yeah, you can see as I turn it and line it up again, now the throttle is still a little bit set back at the very top part here. And that's fine because this brake pedal is going to move. But I want to make sure i got plenty of throttle over here to smack with the heel of my foot so I can do my heel and toe. Job accomplished. Now, we also have a couple other adjustments here. Of course, we have a preload just like we do on the clutch pedal over there. And that's going to really affect the how much initial force it takes to move this thing. All right? How much do you want to feel? And usually I go light on preload. And if I want to make it harder to push, then I'll use the adjustment here. And all this is, again, is a nut and a bolt. And you'll see it has a slot here, just like all the other Husingveld pedals. And if I loosen this up, I can raise it up or down. Now, you want to take the preload off before you loosen this, all right? Because you don't want it pushing up against there as you're trying to push this thing up. It makes it a lot harder. And sometimes you might even want to loosen up the bolts right here to help loosen up the whole bracket. It depends on the each each sample. Some of them you don't have to do that. Some is so stiff that yeah, it's really hard to move it unless you loosen that up. But yeah, it's just something to be looking out for if you're making the adjustments to yours. But the point is here that if I raise this, it's going to make it harder for me to push this pedal back all the way through the stroke. And if I lower it, it's going to make it easier because it's just the lever principle, right? So if we have a bigger lever, when we pick it up, up here, we're actually shortening the lever we're using to push against the spring. And if we bring it down, we have a more direct, and actually we have more of a lever to act on the spring so it becomes easier. So up for hard, down for easy. Pretty simple there. I'm going to leave it in medium because 
doing it by hand, I'm, I'm kind of trying to feel it. It kind of feels pretty good now, even though I'm doing it just by my hand. But it's just one of those things sometimes that you can feel and, yeah, after years of experience, that that's probably where, or at least it's going to be close to where I'm going to want mine to be. And the whole thing is, this is all subjective, so it doesn't matter where I put it. It, you know, it matters where you like it. Right. So, yeah, not much else to talk about with the throttle as far as adjustments go. And, yeah, I guess that's it for the pedal adjustments. We got everything where we want it to. And, again, it's good to try to get very close to where you think you want to be on the bench because once we get all these guys lined up together like this, especially in a heel and toe configuration, it's not going to be easy to get down in here to these bolts and nuts and work with them and make adjustments. It's not impossible, but it's just nowhere near as easy as obviously having them individually out on the bench and doing it. Right. So what we'll do next is get to the heel plate and pedal bracket that they sell for this kit and see what we think about that and how it goes together. Okay. Now we can actually take a closer look at what this mounting system that Husingville has come up with consists of. Obviously, we have this big silver part, and it is actually stainless steel. We can take the magnet and try to stick to it, and it will barely stick there. You can see it kind of wobbles around a little bit. Ah! <laughs> so that's how magnets stick to stainless steel. Now, we also have this metal plate here, which is about as twice as heavy as this, and it's regular steel. because It really sticks. <laughs> yeah, sticks pretty hard, or stiffly. And we also have these two bottom support pieces or cross members that are going to put every, are going to hold all this together, and they are also the regular steel, right? Now, this stainless steel plate, this magnet's trying to go crazy on me there. The stainless steel plate is, I believe, this is like two. Let's see. Try to get, you guys can see this. It was one six. I think like one and a half as far as the thickness is. And this plate over here, again, this is m feels about as twice as heavy as this is, more substantial. And it's a thicker plate too. We can see this is actually about, uh, we're getting close to three and a half there. Well, 3.25, okay. Maybe it is three. And these guys over here are a little bit thinner. They'll run about yeah, it looks like two and a half mils on these. So, those are the pieces. And it's pretty simple as far as what you have to do to assemble this. And they give you a lot of hardware and spacers and things like that. Standoffs, rather. We've got, once this is assembled, we'll take a look at the standoffs and how they work. And, yeah, it's actually it, part of the assembly for this is going to be with standoffs. And what I did was I kind of mocked it up first. And... I'm not going to assemble it right this second. I'm just going to show you guys how this is supposed to work. First off, these crossbars have four holes in them. All right. So we have actually two pairs. You got a pair here and a pair here. And on the bottom, there's actually three holes. And you can see they're kind of oblongish and have some room to maneuver if you have a bolt in there. That's how you're going to attach this to your rig or whatever mounting surface you're putting this on. So these are going to be attached to this. And when you use these, we attach them, we're going to want them pointing outboard. We want this U-channel pointing outward on the sides like this, like this, so that we can still get in here from the side when it's mounted or to mount it and have access to the bolts we need to get access to. Right, but we'll cover that when we actually do the assembly. Now, I'm going to mock this up real quick just to show you guys what this is going to look like. Let me get our two bars out here. I'm going to go ahead and put the plate across here, and that'll help stabilize it. Just line up my holes so I know I'm where I'm supposed to be. Where's my hole? There they are. All right. So that's how the front plate sits, and of course the back plate is just going to come in and sit right on top of that, and we'll line their holes up. And that's the way it is. I mean, it's, it's pretty simple, really, when you think about what's going on here. And I'm actually just going to put my pedals, or not my pedals, actually this pedal set as I said in the intro, uh, is lent to me from a fellow sim racer who wanted me to do a review on it. I've been trying to get a, a set of these for a while anyway. So there's the brake, clutch, and throttle. And 
You do have some, some movement because of the slots in here, but we'll look at that in detail later. But what I wanted to do really was see where I wanted this heel plate to be. And, and this is what you would do if you think you need the heel plate to be higher. And I just take one of my racing shoes, right? And just kind of stick it up against there. And as you can see, with my heel on this plate, it's actually, it would actually work, I think. I might not have to put any spacers in here, actually, the way this is looking. And you can see that I want the ball of my foot to be right in this area right here. So I have control of it. And the throttle also is usually the pedal that goes further back than any one of the clutch or the brake pedal. And I kind of want that to be like that also. And I usually have my feet almost flat like this. Okay, because that's really the proper way to do this. If you get your get your butt low enough in your seat, you should have pretty much a straight angle, maybe a little bit of an angle on it, but pretty much straight up and down to attack your pedal face there. And yeah, I'm thinking this actually might be perfect for me. Now, I'm going to go ahead and show you, and these are the spacers you get. I got two different ones. We get a 40 mil and we get a 20 mil. All right. And so they have thread inserts on this side. And of course we have the threaded rods on this side. And of course we would be attaching it like this. You put the threaded rod into the hole. Go ahead and just do these twenties. Going to be more stable anyway when I do this. All right. And then we just set that on there and attach with the, the screws that they give us. So now you can see I'm 20 centimeters, uh, not 20 centimeters, 20 millimeters higher. And that would put me at, you know, I'm, I'm indecisive here. <laughs> I'm looking at it. Of course, this is very subjective and everybody's going to be a little different, but I'm thinking I might prefer it that way. Yeah, because I'm going to be doing some heel and toe too. So when I'm on the brake pedal here, I'm going to want to want to be able to come over and catch this throttle with my heel as I slap it with the heel when I do downshifts. But actually, I think I'm going to use the spacers. So that's how it all works. And what we'll do next is actually get into the nitty gritty of assembling it. We have a lot of hardware here. Of course, we're not going to be using all this. I got it in my magnetic dish here. That's what I usually do. Dump, if I have a lot of stuff, just dump it out there and try to segregate it a little bit to, you know, washers and bolts and stuff. So it's a little bit easier as far as putting things together. Everything's right where you need it. You also get four of these T-nuts for 40 series profile, right? And this is a good one too. It's, it's the roll-in T-nuts. It's got a little spring ball in there. So these are the high quality ones. Got the little grooves in there that help match up with the channel. So yeah, as usual with Husingveld, you get the best stuff when you get your kits, or at least you get high quality stuff. I don't know if it's the best, but definitely high quality. So yeah, that's what we'll do when we come back. I'm going to go ahead and have everything set out and the bolts I'm going to need and start putting this puppy together and just see how difficult or easy it turns out to be. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and put this thing together. And I'll probably do two segments. We'll assemble this part of it, all these plates and these two bars, and then we'll do another segment on actually attaching the pedals. Right, so what I want to do here is, if you saw on the closer look part, there's four holes here. There's actually two pairs of holes. We've got two here and two here. And that's to accept the holes that are on the stainless steel heel plate part. You can see the holes there. And they also have these holes. They all have the counter bore so that we're going to be using some flathead screws. So obviously it'll sit flush with the top of this plate and the back plate, the same thing. It's got the counterboard holes in it. And we're just going to set this on the two back holes, match that up real quick. Put this one under here on this side. It's really pretty simple to do this. It's just going to be a bit fiddly because there's a lot of hardware to put on this to get everything mounted, including our pedals when we get to that point. So, Here's the flathead screws, and these are 2.5 millimeter hex on the top of this, and we're going to be using these little locking flange nut type deals. It's got these little teeth in them. Oh, that's showing up there. They got little gripping teeth. Some people call these grip nuts. Yeah. Anyway, what we're going to do is go ahead and put. In fact, I probably should turn this around so you guys can see a little better what's going on here. And also, almost did what I should not be doing. When we orient these bars here, you can see it's got a U channel. We want the open part to be facing on the outer parts of this rig or of this assembly. So I'll spin that around, spin this one around, 
and then we'll go ahead come back with our heel plate and set that on top get this one lined up over here all right not that hard we'll go ahead and just put a screw in on every hole and that kind of will just hold it a little bit while i'm actually fiddling around with these little nuts <laughs> that we're going to have to put in here again this is a, a bit of a fiddly process and i'll probably be saying that a lot as i'm doing this and these nuts will fit right on here now again the worst part is getting your fingers under there with the nut i have a 2.5 driver here and i'm just going to kind of set it under there and use the driver to twist it and go into the nut you got a feel for where that screw is under there it's hard to uh actually do a good shot of video on this but you guys get the idea so once you find the nut then you just you don't want to get it too tight because you want to leave it loose enough to get the other guy started i'm going to reach around this other side here and see if i can feel the screw feel the screw be the screw and again this is kind of a blind thing but it's easy enough to feel i think with your fingers once you're actually doing it grab another nut and we'll do this one over here and yeah see this is where it gets because of this flange here yeah i'm gonna have to come in at a different angle to get to this little screw under here <laughs> as a matter of fact i'm glad i did these two first because i'm going to snug them up i'm going to cheat a little bit here and if you put your finger pressure on that nut because it's got those teeth in it it'll kind of grip the metal and tighten up pretty decently without a wrench on the end of it to hold it so now i'm going to cheat i'm just going to do this <laughs> i'm going to see if i can get the nut see how this is kind of tucked up against here again hence the definition of fiddly because you have to just get one finger in there and try to get the thread started properly and you know it's not that difficult it's just like i said it's one of those things that just does not go fast now that we got that one in i can come over and finish this one so put my finger in there i think i use my thumb this time oh, finger and a thumb it's easy when you can get a driver trying to use the little l wrench that came with this kit you can get it done but it's much easier to control with if you have a driver on the other end right all right so there we have it and now i'm going to go back and just loosen these a little bit because we might have to do some alignment checks or differences with these once i get this plate on here and i'm going to go ahead and put the spacers on which actually are going to be easier because see i don't have a plate on there yet if i didn't use these spacers i'm in the same situation here i've got this plate sitting here and i'm doing this again trying to get it flip it over and do stuff but actually the spacers <laughs> believe it or not well, it's going to make things a little bit easier for us as we go along here so i can actually you see you got easy access now because yeah obviously yeah this is this is the way to do it <laughs> so use spacers even if you don't need them right <laughs> uh, of course you would wouldn't do that if you didn't need them but uh, again it's saving me some fiddly bits here flip it around and yeah this is going actually a little bit smoother than i thought it would when i was looking at all the hardware that came with it and all the bits that need to be put on here i was thinking wow this is it's going to be a little time consuming but not too bad now that we have this and i can go ahead and i'm going to i'm going to leave these a little bit loose and now i'm going to put the top one and go ahead and get our other screw started and I'll do that by finger tightening or finger starting rather and I'm, it looks like the holes over there are off a little bit so that's why you want to leave things a little loose so I can wiggle it around a little bit and get it to come in where we need it there's one right on yeah this is good good stuff man it's not fighting me too much I always like it when that happens a little magnetic handle came apart so now we're good we just go ahead and run these down and you can go ahead and start tightening things down at this point i think i don't think you're going to run into any problems with alignment because these flathead screws i'm kind of wiggling the plate back and forth here when i'm running it down just to make sure i get that flathead screw in sync with the counter bores on the plate just to make sure that nothing gets funky there and i'm actually tightening this down without a wrench on the bottom because of those the type of nuts that they have in this kit which is a great idea by the way it helps 
cut the time down to what you're doing here. Now I can go back in the back here and we'll go ahead and tighten these guys up. And hopefully, I can just hold my finger there, I think. Yeah, you probably don't, you probably want to make sure you get this pretty tight because we're going to be putting a lot of pressure on it with our brake pedal, I think. At least up to 143 pounds. Ah, there we go. All right, well, that wasn't too bad. It wasn't too painful to watch that. And yeah, it's actually a very solid little unit here, it feels like. Yeah. Still got a little jiggle to it, which means this guy can come down a little bit more, it looks like. Yeah, you want to check that. Yeah, I'm actually moving here. Let's see if I can... I don't know why this keeps falling out on me. See if I can... I'm just kind of pressing down on it here because I can see I got a little more room to screw this down. But I think what really the problem is, is the... This nut here, the standoff itself, might be a little bit uneven on the top. Because it's not letting me tighten this down far enough. I mean, I'm putting some torque on it now. <laughs> and it's still moving around. Let me try the other ones. Sometimes you gotta go all the way around again just to check things, because as you're tightening it down, one will pull away from the other. So yeah, it looks like that may have happened here. It's a little bit of settling. Yeah, it's a little better. Yeah, I still have a um, little bit of wiggle here on the front. Hear that? And this screw is down tight. And I'm sure I'm tight down here on the back. Because really, that's where the wiggle is. The wiggle is between the plate and the top of this. Now I can actually put a 7 inch, or rather, this 7 mil nut back here. I'm going to put a wrench and check it. Yeah, that is tight. So, what would you do about this? I think... That if I was, this is going to be my set and I was building this and this happened, I would probably go get, I have a lot of little bits laying around of like screws and washers and things like that. I would actually go get a plastic washer or maybe a super thin metal one to try to take the slack out of that. In fact, you know what? They got some that come with this. See these little, little washers here? Why don't we try that? While we're doing this, boy, this is going to make my video go too long. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, now that's that's real tight, and that's it. I believe that's a ten mil, and that's eight mil. So yeah, you got to get in there and hold the spacers now to get them loose, because I got so tight on that. You hear them breaking loose there, and I'm gonna go ahead and break these guys loose too. So I'm actually underneath here grabbing that standoff. There we go, and loosen one more. And I'm glad I ran across this because this is, you know, typical of kind of things that you find out when you have your kit, you know, anything, not just a, a brake kit or something like that. But you come to find out, man, this is, uh, yeah, this is not quite going together like I thought it would. All right, so we're going to take this one out. And I'm hoping that's going to give me enough room to get that washer in there. All right, so we've got these little four millimeter washers here. They come with the kit. So I am going to attempt, probably better if I kind of tilted this up a little bit. Make sure we get that standoff good and tight. You want to make sure that's tight so it's not going to move once I get that washer in the orientation I want it in. I'm going to kind of, in fact, I might just do it this way. See, so turn it upside down, let gravity help me out a little bit here. I'm going to scooch that in there. I hope this works. And then carefully, Take the screw and put it in from the other side and get it back in to the standoff is the idea okay kind of holding everything together there okay kind of jiggling around a little bit trying to get the thread centered and there they go good news there's my other washer that i don't need to use don't want to lose anything you might need these parts later. Okay, so now we're, all we're going to do is obviously go back in and tighten everything up again. And see, I think I could probably tighten this right here and see if it's going to do the trick or not. Yes, I think it is. All right. We don't want any vibrations or 
things jiggling around if we can help it. There we go. So all this is tightening back up. And again, I'm kind of moving this plate a little bit to make sure these flathead screws seat properly. Okay, it's getting tight. 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 All right, this is this is the moment of truth here. Ah, it's tight. See if I did any good there. Ah, you hear that? I hear nothing. <laughs> all right, so all we needed was a washer. Now, that did cause the the flathead screw to sit just a little proud here, right in there. It's not much at all though. You, there's no way that would really interfere with anything, but just a little bit proud, right? Because of that, the washer kicked it up a little bit. Okay, so it can't go down as far. So, but just because it was a nice thin washer, it really did the trick there. So I'm very pleased with that result. So if you guys have that problem with your plates, then yeah, that's how you can fix it. All right, so enough time on that. Let's go to actually mounting the pedals, which again is going to be a bit fiddly because, again, the way this is made, and I'll say this right now, you can't get to anything underneath here. Well, this is where the pedals are going once you have them on. And I wish they did not put this bend here. I know as far as aesthetics, that looks good, right? That little bend over there. But now I can't get to the screws from the rear with a wrench. If I had a long wrench here, and I need to break a screw loose to adjust one of the pedals back or forth, it'd be much easier if that wasn't there and I was going in like this, right? To get to one of the nuts. Of course, I can't get through there because we've got the supporting cross sections. <laughs> so, yeah, adjusting these pedals back and forth, if you want to adjust them this way, you're probably going to have to just take the whole assembly off and to be able to rock it up and get to those bottom nuts. So. Not the most user-friendly thing as far as that solution is concerned, or this solution is concerned. Let me tighten this down. I thought I saw that move a little bit. Yeah, there we go. All right. Okay, so there we have it. Now we'll come back and mount the pedals and see how that goes. Time to mount the pedals to this back plate here. And of course, we're going to be mounting them to these slots in the plate and so that we have some lateral movement also with the pedals if we need to adjust them. And yeah, what I'm going to do here is just attach, I'm going to do the throttle first, because it's over here on this side. And because again, if you watch the previous assembly of this, they've got this bend in the plate here that cuts our access to the bottom of this. If it's sitting like this, yeah, you can't get under there to get to the nuts to, to attach it, or if they're already on there, to loosen them so you can slide things sideways and or wherever you want to up, up and back or sideways. So, <laughs> but the good thing is, when we first assemble this, we can actually take this and put it like this on the side, right? And I can actually access these up to the point of where that bar is stopping me. So I can get these two outboard screws in. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and these are five mil socket head caps. I believe these are four mil, yeah. These are four mil socket head cap bolts and we're going to put a washer on there and that's just going to go into the flange that's on the pedal very simple like that and that'll go in there i'm going to put two in here and they give us more nuts obviously as you saw before i've got a magnetic dish full of goodies and these are the five mil nuts and they're the same nuts that we use to actually assemble this tray and they've got those teeth on them right so they bite into the metal gripping flanges on here, if you will. Anyway, they work pretty good, actually. So I'm just going to tilt this up a little bit, hold it with a finger on top, and go ahead and get this started and do the same thing over here. And then I'm going to go ahead and snug it up a little bit, get my wrench out here. Cool thing about these nuts is they'll go ahead and bite into the metal a little bit. I'm just going to snug it up just a bit it from sliding around as we're just trying to do now and then I'm going to flip it up and put the other two in like this because really to get to these sections here there's only one way to do it and that's to turn it upside down it is what it is as they say and yeah so I'm going to go ahead and get my five mil screw in there get our nut on so this is really simple when you have it on the bench <laughs> Not, it's not going to be so simple when you need to make an adjustment on the pedals as far as 
upper back, pushing up upper back because we can actually move these upper back and sideways. See, we can go this way with it. Let's see if I can, well, that's a little bit too tight. Let's go loosen this up again. All right, there we go. So you can see I can actually go sideways to, to the limits, obviously, of where this bar is and the grooves themselves, the slots. And of course, we can actually move it forward and backwards a little bit. So we can better align everything that we want to get aligned up here. So that's all I'm gonna do for this. I'm gonna go ahead and get this, this one on. Is Actually, I've already got this one on. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and mount my clutch. And once I have both of these mounted, we'll cut back in and I'll show you what I do to mount the brake because you really have to have full access to mount the brake pedals. When we come back, these guys will be mounted and we'll be putting the brake on. So now we've got the clutch and the throttle assembled onto the plate and because we don't have easy access to any of the screws for the brake pedal I went ahead and did those first so I, now I can lean it back it's a steady platform to work with and then we can actually come in and kind of set that there see that now I have a rubber mat here so that helps a lot as far as gripping the top of this pedal plate here my pedal face rather so I'm just kind of scooching it up and let it sit there like that ah isn't that great and of course we're just going to go ahead and put these five mil screws in very carefully. I don't want it to fall off. This goes pretty quick when we have easy access to everything. And I'm going to have to kind of gauge when I need this as far as the distance between my brake pedal and my throttle because I'm going to be doing some heel and toe for demonstration on this pedal set because that's what I like to do to pedal sets is, you know, heel and toe is definitely a, a good test. If you guys ever do that technique or ever try that technique, it's a lot of fun too, once you actually get it down to where you can do it. All right, so there we have it. They're not tight yet, but yeah, everything's on now. But again, back to what I was saying before, if I need to change the orientation of this pedal back or forth or sideways, yeah, there's, um, there's no way to get to that. You're going to have to take it off from where you've got it mounted. I mean, we've got two or three bolts, whatever you're using on each side, and then you're just going to have to rock it up to get to it, or maybe just pull the whole thing off like this and go carry it over to your bench and do it. But again, it is what it is. It's, it's just the result of the design, the way it, it, it's made. And let me see. I'm going to set this up to where I think I'm going to be using it. And... For heel and toe, typically I want my brake pretty darn close so that when my foot's up here, let me do the shoe again. <laughs> so when I'm, got my, I'm going into the turn you're, and you're on the brake, then you can reach over and just slap the throttle, right? So you want it pretty close. Or some guys like to actually do a roll off type of throttle. So when they're on the brake, they're kind of on the brake more on this side than this side and just kind of roll off onto the throttle to blip it. I prefer the heel and toe to, because that's the way I learned. And <laughs> it's that's just the way I do it. Right. So, yeah, and then the clutch has got plenty of room over here. And I'm thinking that's about where I want it. Yeah. My hand's about the same size as my foot. Just kidding. But yeah, that's I think that'll do it. So what we'll do is now that we have it mounted, you see how all this stuff goes on. I'm going to tighten it down where I think it's gonna I need it to be. And then we're going to talk about, well, we can talk about that right now. Just so that we don't have to do another segment. These bottom three holes on the plates are the supports that hold the two plates together. That's where we're going to be mounting to the profile. I'm going to be mounting this one on a ProSim, uh, not ProSim, SimLab. <laughs> SimLab P1 cockpit that you guys might know or already know that that's what I use. And I'm going to be mounting two on each side because the way my grooves line up, I can only use the top, the back one and the front one here can't use this one now there's other ways to do this too i might you know if, if i was going to keep this which i'm not i got to send it back to the guy who this fellow sim racer who sent this to me i would probably do something like grab some of these it's a good example and just mount this to this right to a piece of profile and then i could use l brackets on the side of the profile here to attach it to whatever i wanted it to and if I needed it higher, I could actually get a double stack like this under there. So I could actually raise and lower this whole pedal set 
to where I need it to be to get the, the proper angle that I like to have, which is about my bottom of my seat there being about level where the heel is resting on the heel plate with my shoe. So just like a straight plane across that where the butt's sitting and your heels are sitting. That's the most comfortable for me anyway. So yeah, but yeah, again, we're gonna have to kind of, I'm gonna kind of guesstimate, which I'm pretty good at by now. I'm just doing this so much that yeah, you kind of know where it needs to be. And go ahead and tighten everything down. When we come back, we'll have it attached to the rig and see how that looks. So right, we have the pedals mounted to our P1 rig on the pedal platform, obviously. And yeah, looks pretty good there. I'm gonna kind of circle around here and let you see how I was set up for the heel and toe shifting that we'll be doing. And we have the wires in the back all connected. And they're obviously from the throttle and the clutch going over to the brake. And the brake pedal is going over to the computer. Right. Now, there's something I want to show you guys here. Let me get down here and turn on my light. All right. This channel here that this plate is mounted to, it's not easy to get in here and do something <laughs> to actually secure your bolts. And I noticed something that I wanted to show you guys that first off, I have some, you see there are actually some socket cap head five millimeter screws on the bottom here, one here, one over here, right? You can also see the screw little nut here that's holding the top of this pedal and the one further back back here that's right, almost right over this Allen, where, where you secure the, this to the actual frame here, is right underneath the screw that's holding this plate to this U-channel, right? The problem with this U-channel is, it's too narrow, all right? You can't get, this is a four mil wrench, and you can see you just can't get it in there. And even the ones that they give you in the kit, you can't get that in there either. If you were trying to tighten that, one of these bolts with this, you can get it at it, but you can see it's hitting the top there. You know, there's just no way to get a wrench in there. So I noticed that when I was putting them on, and I noticed there wasn't enough cap head screws to put them on. So I looked in the kit, and I, I saw these, and I, I saw them when I had opened the kit, and I wonder what they were for. And they're these. Let's see, get you a shot of that. It's really bright here. I'll show you this again in, in a second here. We'll go over to the bench. But this is a hex head. So the idea is to fix the problem of not being able to use a socket cap head type screw, whoops, is to use one of these. And this is obviously, you can use a, a wrench, a flat wrench to get in there and tighten this down, right? But let's go over here to the actual bench and I'll show you the problem with that. It must have been some kind of a stopgap measure. Let's give, a, give you a better look at it here, see? Now this is actually a 15 millimeter thread. Unfortunately, now they give us these nice roll-in T-nuts, right? Spring ball deal. There's the ball, yeah. Very nice. And these are five mil, and they fit into a piece of 40 series like that, right? And I've already got the 40, this one set up. The problem is this is a 15 millimeter long thread, right? You can see here, I've actually simulated the, lit, the actual thickness of the U-channel metal that's gonna, that we're actually putting the bolt through, and actually, I've, I've done even more than that because there's two washers in here, right? It's trying to simulate that. These washers are actually three mil thick, and the actual metal on that U-channel is two and a half mil thick, right? So this is actually thicker than the actual metal that we're actually trying to attach it to. So you can see the problem here. See down here on the side where that screw's going down? I don't know how I can see that. But the screw is bottoming out on the channel, the bottom of the channel there in this 40 series. So that means we can't, I can't tighten this any more than it is which means, guess what? The, t the metal plate, the U-channel, is not gonna be secure. It's just gonna wiggle around. You're not gonna be able to use it. So you have to use something less than 15. I actually went and got some 10 millimeter. Well, I don't have any extras because I used them, but some cap head sucks. You saw them over there. Got some 10 millimeters and they fit. But then I'm back with the problem with the socket head, yeah, cap screw thing, trying to get a wrench in there to actually secure it. So this is the fix for the problem of the channel being too narrow, right? If they added fifth, another 10, five, 10 mil to the height of that channel or the width of that channel, it was, wasn't as narrow as it is, it would cure this problem. 
it would be you'd be able to get your wrench in there that and, and be able to get a, a socket head cap screw which is really everybody prefers using those when they're assembling something not this stuff okay you know, you know this works don't get me wrong but the thing is when i saw this in the bag i was i thought maybe somebody put the wrong bolts in the bag because usually out of the Husingveld shop all you see is socket you know head cap screws you don't see any i've never seen one of these on any of the pedal sets and i think i've reviewed just about everything Husingveld's ever produced and i've never seen one of these in the, in the kit anywhere and now i saw them and i'm thinking well what you know it doesn't make okay here's what happened i'm, I'm sure that they found out that the channel's too narrow it's hard enough to get your fingers in there just to get the screw started and then you know get it finger tight and then try to come back with the wrench and tighten it because of, of, of just it's just so narrow and this is again their stop gap basically they you know say we'll just throw these in there right and they can use those and then use a flat wrench on it problem solved instead of maybe going back to the u channel and you know making it wider and just making it easier to get in there and do everything you need to do again this, this took me aback a little bit because this is so unlike it's, it's, it's uncharacteristic let me put that put it that way of what i've gotten so far from the Husingveld shop the guys over at Husingveld. i just don't understand why they went with this just throw some you know bolts in there that might make it work and then the, then it turns out they're too long <laughs> to work in the 40 series so it's just like i said uncharacteristic of what we usually expect and see from Husingveld. right now this has nothing to do with the pedals this is all about this platform here that, that they sell for the pedals right just want to show you guys this stuff other than that you know everything is fine you know it, the, the pedals are going to be fine and we did manage to get everything in there i managed to get those those socket cap screws down tight enough with a pair of very small vice grips that i have and was able to tighten them down that way and the same thing if you know you had something like this and you're using a flat wrench basically the same thing so yeah just wanted to show you guys because again here at the sim racing garage i always try to show you guys any issues that i run into in you know all the details so you can make a more informed decision about whether or not you want to spend your hard-earned money on a product right so yeah i think the way to go here would be next time they do a batch of those u channels just make it wider five mil ten mil you know in in the height change of that there's no way anybody's going to notice a height change of five to ten millimeters on a set of pedals when you're sitting in a rig i, I mean I, maybe they could i'm sure somebody out there will say oh yeah i could but yeah that's very very you know we're talking this much it's not very much at all we, we cure all this right and then we better resemble what we usually get from housing belt and again the channels themselves the holes at the very end i'd like to see those moved in 10 millimeters because as i showed you before those heads when the bolts go in there the heads where you're trying to tighten them are directly just about directly underneath the nuts that we're using to secure the the, the fasteners to secure the top parts of the deck so yeah just something else anyway just thought I'd show you guys that. And what we'll do next is, yeah, we'll get in here and do the calibration on the pedals using their software. Now let's take a look at the smart control application that is used to calibrate these pedals. And this is for only for the sim pedal sprint as far as I know so far. And we're on the calibration tab and we can see if I move the pedals, the throttle, the brake, and the clutch, that we can see the corresponding fields filling with green now i've already calibrated these once so i'm going to calibrate them again so this, all you do is real simple all you do is hit start calibration and you just move the pedals make sure all pedals are in their rest position and then we go to next step okay so we're not going to press on anything yet next step is throttle will be first and what we do is we actually press the throttle all the way down and hold it and that's what i'm doing here and while i'm holding i'll hit next step and release the throttle and it's reading the range of the load cell signal. So I'll go to next step, we move over to the brakes, and I'll go ahead and put the max brake on. Now this is a 65 kilogram load cell, but it's only coming up, maxing out when I bottom it out to 46 kilograms, and I'm not sure why it's doing that. What you need to really need to do here is just give it the pressure that you like, you think you want to feel, all right, on the brake pedal, and then hold it there. I'll say, I'll just use 32, uh, 32 kilograms here. And then you release it and you can see it's still showing one kilogram but it's going to automatically dead zone that once it calibrates now we'll go over to the clutch and press that and again it's moving up to the clutch is all the way down and just hold it there 
Oh, wait a minute. We got to go to the next step first. <laughs> yeah, almost, almost didn't do it. <laughs> so you got to hit next step before you go to it. There we go. Okay, now we're good. So I'm just going to put it to where I think I want it to feel. I'm pushing through the pressure plate now, and, and yeah, I kind of like the feel of it right about there. So I hit next step. Now we release it. Next step. And we're done. So you say save calibration. Now once I save calibration, all these little green bars up here should disappear. And they have. So now I can actually go all the way up to the 4095 on all of these as I'm pressing them down. 40, well, actually, it went past 40, didn't I? It's interesting. And I'm bottomed out at 40, so I guess 40 is the limit on this, even though they say it's 65 kilograms or 150 pounds. Anyway, so yeah, and we'll go over to clutch, and yeah, there's full clutch and no clutch. So again, all the dead zones you can see, there is no green showing, so it automatically applies the dead zone. So I'm gonna go up here and look at the profile I just created and click on the profile tab, and there it is. So you can see my dead zones are in here at 5% for bottom and top on the clutch. Uh, dead zone is really not a dead zone here. We got a dead zone of 7% on the brake on the bottom, but on the top is the max, for max force. And it says 47 kilograms here. And we'll revisit that in a minute as far as profiles are concerned. Throttle is dead, top dead zones 10%, bottom dead zones 5%. All right, now you can actually come in here and change these curves around. And right now I have actually a profile that I have loaded up, a preset if you will that you can get from Husingveld. They have these presets, which is pretty cool. If I wanted to get out of this custom, I just go back to linear and that straightens out my clutch curve. Because you, you notice all these, you have a, a little curve here on the clutch and you have a curve on the brake, but you have a straight linear output for the throttle. And again, when you change anything from linear, it turns into a custom. Well, not custom, there are some other ones we can choose from. You can see here we have a sense plus one, plus two, and you click on those and those will change the curves negative, positives, and we can go to an S-shape. Ooh, an S-shape. <laughs> S-shape on your clutch. I don't know why you want that, but anyway. And yeah, so you, you would set this where you want to. You can actually increase the individual forces too. If, if I go in here and go back to custom, these light up so I can actually subtract percentage points or add them. And you can see when I'm doing that, see how it's moving? So it gives us a good graph to see what we're really doing here. And the brake's the same way. If I come over here to the brake at the 100% input, you can see I can actually make that come up or down. Right. And same thing over here if you go to custom on the throttle. You can change that around. Let's see if I can go down here. And yeah, there we go. So yeah, and if I go to linear, it turns it right back to linear. And you could actually go in and turn all these to linear and everything gets straightened out like that, which I'm gonna do on purpose because I'm gonna go now into show you how you can load the presets that are available for different games. So I go to file, I go to open file, and it opened up, I'm gonna bring this up so you guys can see it. And here's my presets folder. I'm gonna go back to that. We've got a set of Corsa, a set of Corsa, the newest set of Corsa, and we've got iRacing and R Factor 2. And rain, I'm not sure what the rain is, but uh, these are all .xml files. Let's open up iRacing. So you can actually look at these by opening them up with your browser and see what they mean or they're doing. So I can go in here and say open with, uh, let's see, Google Chrome. There we go, it opened, let me bring that up so you can see it. There it is. Now we can't change anything in these. All right, it's because it's an HTML file. You have to get an editor out if you want to change it, but it's their preset, so I wouldn't want to change it anyway, I don't think. But you could play with it if you wanted to. Now, so that's show you what the file looks like. So let's get back out of that. And I'm going to, here's, it, it's, it depends on the car you're, you're actually running. And we got a dirt sprint car. We got a calibration. Not sure what that one means. We have generic GT3, generic GTE, uh, generic GTE full brake. I mean, we got some different profile for MX-5, stock car, stock car speedway, stock car short oval. So yeah. It's got some good presets in here. I'm just going to go with, because I'm going to be running a GT3 Ferrari on the road course, I'm going to click that one. And then I click open, and you'll watch what changes here. I'm going to pull this out of the way and then click open. And you'll watch my linear. Everything gets changed up here. Watch this. Boom. 
Oh, that's right, I forgot. I'm gonna select all of them. You can actually go in here and custom tune this before you load the preset, which is also cool too, in case there's something you wanna change in here before it gets loaded. So I just select, I'll just go with the actual default, click down here on import. Now, <laughs> our green lines are gonna change. Let's see, there we go. So you see that we're back to these custom curves on the brake and on the clutch over here. And we're staying linear with the throttle, which you pretty much, I guess, would always want linear on the throttle. And there we go. So yeah, it's nice to be able to use the presets here too. And it's easy to calibrate. So I really like the software. It's very intuitive right out of the box. Again, um, I would expect as much from hosting Bell. The guys over there do a great job with this kind of stuff. Right, so what we'll do next is just get in this thing and drive it. So here we are in my favorite game for testing hardware, iRacing, and we are at Sebring in Lotus 79. And we're doing healing toe shifting here, which is my favorite way to test pedal sets. Hammer on them pretty good. And yeah, I really couldn't find any flaws, any weakness in these pedals. And I really didn't, well, if I could get the car on the road, I really didn't expect to because Husingfeld's always made very good pedal sets. And we'll go with the brake pedal first. A great modulation here, easy to dial in. I went with the medium bumper uh, to get the final feeling for me, but of course that's all subjective. I was able to modulate the brake, brake rather well into the curves. And of course, before I get to the curves, which is very important, very consistent and yeah, easy to, to come up to speed on the brake pedal very quickly. And yeah, the throttle pedal, I was able to get that dialed in where I wanted to as far as how much force it took to get it over, over my heel over and blipping it. So everything worked together as one integral unit. Clutch pedal, well, it, it did a, a good job of, of letting you know that you were pressing through a spring plate, but I, even with the highest settings, I couldn't get it quite to feel like I wanted to. But again, that's totally subjective. And when you throw it all together and you're doing, you know, you're in the heat of battle here, pushing hard and doing heel and toe shifting, it all just kind of melds together anyway. So yeah, overall here, you know, as you might imagine, the sprints are a very good pedal set. And yeah, I really have not, I can't really can't gripe about too much here with this pedal set. It really does a good job. And like I said, most people that have these sprints are very happy with them. I don't ever see too many complaints out there on the internet about them either. So yeah. As, as expected, you know, it's a Husingvel product and it's doing a great job. What we'll do next is, yeah, we'll just go ahead and get to the final thoughts. Final thoughts on the SimPedal Sprint from Husingvel Engineering. I've been looking forward to reviewing this kit for some time now. And finally, <laughs> thanks to a fellow sim racer I know, I'm able to put them through the SRG's review process. This set has some notable differences from the Pro pedal set that the sprints are replacing. Where there was stainless steel plates used throughout the pedals, now we have some powder coated steel plates that are actually mixed in. And I noticed that there are nuts securing one side of the frames, where before there were cap bolts on both sides of the frames. These are little differences that, well, we just noticed. <laughs> Overall, the build quality is up to the usual standards we have previously seen from Husingveld, which is very good. The throttle was easy to dial in and has a lot of range in its adjustability. I had really no problem getting it dialed into my personal preference. The brake is similar to the Pro brake, but with some changes to how the bumper stack is arranged. Now, including a spring to simulate the initial slack most every real brake pedal has. I tried every rubber bumper setup that I could actually use, and I ended up with the thinnest one mounted. Of course, the brake performs very well and it's easy to be consistent with your lap times with such a predictable brake feel. The clutch mechanism, I think it's the biggest change from the Pro's setup. It has a completely different look to it. And I was able to dial it in to get, well, what I thought was a close feeling you get from a real clutch on a car. I was able to easily use a heel and toe technique when I had the pedal set up for that kind of technique. This, I think, is one of the best tests for a pedal set. You can really bang on them. <laughs> the pedal base that HE sells for the Sprint pedals did its job well as far as providing a rather solid way to mount your pedals and have a place to rest your heels. But, as you may have seen in the video, I think mounting the platform could be made much easier as far as its design. It's, it was a little bit diff more difficult than it had to be because of the U-channel rails that support the mount and the heel plates needs to be just a bit wider to allow access to the screws with an Allen wrench. I was a bit surprised 
to see the solution to this access issue to be a, a set of hex head five millimeter bolts that actually turned out to be too long to use with the 40 series profiles and the included roll in spring ball T-nuts. Just not the usual top notch solution I'm used to seeing from the Husingveld team. Overall, the Sprint set is a well built and it uses strong materials and top notch parts. Even though a lot has changed between the old Pro pedals and the new Sprint pedals, one thing hasn't changed. There's still a great performing set of pedals that are a lot of fun to use. I'm Barry Rowland. Thanks again for watching the Sim Racing Garage channel. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you would like to help support what I do here at the SRG, visit my website at simracinggarage.com.